uh, are capable of somehow telling us through its decay rate how much should be left. Which is what we observe. Which is of course impossible. Pretty that your claims of impossible don't agree with the actual evidence we've collected. Uh, it's also an absolute denial of the massive quantities of water that were, are on this earth and always have been on this earth. That was another instance of psychological projection based on a fundamentalist belief in the Bible. There is insufficient water underground to create your mythical flood. Because, of course, there is no natural process which could have possibly created so much water. For once the creationist is right, there is no natural process that could create the amount of water in such a short amount of time that would be required to flood Mount Everest. But then, of course, there isn't that much water, and the flood didn't happen. And it's obvious that you're also quite unaware of something that evolutionist scientists really don't want you to know. The creationist continues to demonstrate his insanity. Uh, which is that water is not just on the earth, but it's all throughout the earth. Perhaps the creationist can tell us something we don't already know. United States Geological Survey and several scientific journals, including Nature, all carry the requisite information on water storage and underground sources, including that which is stored in the mantle. You see, all the way through the crust of the earth, down into the solid mantle of the earth, there are molecules of water captured in solid granite. Isn't it amusing when a creationist uses old arguments that real scientists have refuted long ago? In fact, there are pockets of water in the mantle itself, so water's always been present everywhere. In fact, there are massive pockets of water under the surface of the Earth, deep down into the crust of the Earth. These are called aquifers, you see. Bloody illiteracy. They're called aquifers, not aquifiers. In fact, there is more water than that. Even below that there is water. I'm talking about massive quantities of water. So, how much water actually exists? Well, according to the United States Geological Survey, the breakdown is as follows. So, you see, if water had formed in the Earth because it was boiling hot and whatnot, the water would have been on the surface of the Earth because it would have been gas, it would have evaporated. Funny that. Isn't that what we see happening when geysers sprout water due to pressure release? Our creationists didn't mention that. Anyway, the runaway subduction, hydroplate and vapor canopy hypotheses have all been refuted. Without the hand of God, there could not be these massive quantities of water below the surface of the earth deep into its crust. This was bound to happen. A series of miracles are needed to make the flood possible. Miracles are magic. Magic is not science. So, according to our creationist, does that mean lightning is God's wrath? You see, you're not a thinker. It's just as well I have a means of keeping a tally on the number of times our creationist commits the psychological projection infraction, isn't it? You just swallow what you're told. Projecting again, Mr. Creationist? Not to mention this doubles his hypocrisy. And, uh, well, that's why you're wrong. They're not wrong. The creationist, however, is wrong. One is forced to wonder if he has ever heard of sources. The final book of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, where from history we had it between three to four hundred years. Sure, what's a few hundred years between friends? He said between three and four hundred years, which is a potential variation of one hundred years. I'm sure you have a point to this rant. Not a couple, you know, a hundred years like you said. But it's a variation nonetheless. So here you are playing the semantics game that the evolutionists always do. Hypocrisy is what the creationist is known for, and if this isn't an obvious example of psychological projection, again, then I don't know what is. Trying to, uh, you know, exaggerate everything they say. And a creationist would never do that, would they? Nah, no, of course not. That was another hypocritical attack, and a creationist, you'll note, missed the extant Dodo's point completely. And, you know, distort what they say. And another one. Because, you don't. Know, have anything to stand on yourself. And another instance of projection. Because evolution theory is purely speculation and conjecture based on assumptions. And an outright lie in combination with yet another act of projection. How efficient of the creationist. You see. And then presented as scientific fact as if there is empirical scientific evidence. Evolution. The change in the frequency of alleles in a gene pool from one generation to the next. This has been observed many times. For it. When in fact there is no scientific evidence for it at all. Once again, the creationist is lying to you. The superposition, that of older rocks on bottom, is only one of the many principles of stratigraphy. Superposition fails in many cases including dynamic activity, 
like cross-cutting of one strata into another as plates shift, failure of supporting strata, like cave deposits from a collapse, or inclusion of strata into newer strata, like cross-cutting followed by erosion. In the cases of mountains, faults and folds make the situation considerably more complex. Superposition is one of many null hypotheses that are tested against evidence. It is not unshakable word. Yes, indeed, it fails at times. Uh, so does everything about uh, evolutionist concepts of geology. Uh, at, but uh, you haven't offered any rebuttal whatsoever for what Mr. Pendleton said, just a description of superposition. And an explanation of where it sometimes fails due to other events. But I'll come back to that. A description of something is not evidence that it has or has not happened. Wait, wait, wait. I sense another video quote mine. ...million years. And the younger rock is underneath it. In other words, the whole thing is turned upside down. He's ignoring geologic erosion and uplift. Remember, the superposition principle is the null hypothesis to be tested against evidence and possibly rejected. <laughs> rejected, all right. Yep, just as I suspected. A creationist not only doesn't believe that actual evidence trumps his evidence-free, doctrine-laden, theologically pornographic book of goat herder myths, but the creationist also believes that taking his critics out of context to try and make them look like idiots is acceptable. It is not. So, what happens when we put this entire section back into context? Let's see, shall we? ...represent millions of years in the evolutionary timescale. And it is that the oldest rocks are furthest in the Earth. On top of them are younger rocks, on top of them are younger rocks, and so goes the sequence. That's simplistic at best. The principle of superposition, that of older rocks on bottom, is only one of the many principles of stratigraphy. Superposition fails in many cases, including dynamic activity, like cross-cutting of one strata into another as plates shift, failure of supporting strata, like cave deposits from a collapse, or inclusion of strata into newer strata, like cross-cutting followed by erosion. In the cases of mountains, faults and folds make the situation considerably more complex. As the extant donors have just explained, the principle of superposition is affected by such things as cross-cutting, erosion, faults, folds, and other geological events as described by plate tectonics. The creationist again has clearly missed the point that the extant donors were making by several million light years. This of course is to be expected. Superposition is one of many null hypotheses that are tested against evidence. It is not unshakable word. Now, we asked the evolutionist, where can we go in the world to see exactly, in sight, these layers of rocks exactly as you've laid out there? You can find evidence for the basic truth of the principle of superposition almost anywhere. For instance, the Grand Canyon has one of the most complete in situ geologic columns in the entire world. We're thinking, where could we go? Oh, I know. We could go to the Grand Canyon in Arizona. That hole is almost a mile deep. In places, it is over a mile deep. We have all kinds of layers of rock. Guess what? About 50% of them are missing. Well, guess what? The missing layers were caused by a period of erosion about 1 billion years long between the two major periods of deposition, one 500 million years ago and the other 1.5 billion years ago. Note the principle of superposition isn't even violated here. It's just interrupted by erosion. Also, as you can see in this next transparency, from Canada into the United States, all this red area is called Precambrian rock. This is rock that's even older than 600,000, 600 million years. And the younger rock is underneath it. In other words, the whole thing is turned upside down. He's ignoring geologic erosion and uplift. Remember, the superposition principle is the null hypothesis, to be tested against evidence and possibly rejected. This is what happens when they send a chemist to play geologist. Don't reject it, all right. Seems a lot different when it's put back into its proper context, doesn't it? And these people accuse sane people of being dishonest. The hypocrisy would make somebody with a weaker stomach vomit violently at this point. And the creationist has once again missed the point being made by the extant dodos also completely ignores the fact that they have already pointed out an example of superposition. Furthermore, does not creationists know that tiny little inconvenient fact that all the continents, including North America, undergo continental drift? Or is the creationist now attacking plate tectonics as well as evolution? What you're suggesting is completely absurd. Actually, the absurdity here is that the creationist willingness to be completely ignorant of the facts. And no evolutionist geologists would say the same thing. Can someone please remind us of the ninth commandment in the Bible? What was that? Oh right, yes, thou shalt not lie. If one did, I'd laugh at him. We believe you. So it's just as well that real scientists don't give two hoots and a holler about your personal incredulity on the matter. You see, North America is all a part of the same continental plate. It seems that the creationist is under the impression that continental plates are completely stationary and never change. That is absurd.